since I'm doing a video on habitat loss, it's fitting that I'm doing it on location here. This spot behind me used to be one of the best dove hunting areas in my entire county. This, uh, all of these fields back here would literally line with hundreds of local people from this town um, on September 1st of every year. And all of them would leave happy with uh, limits of delicious doves. But uh, doves. But uh, no more. Now there's thousands and thousands of homes going up behind me in this huge development. I was actually started filming this segment inside of there, but a security guard for uh, Lennar Development. Uh, ran me off said if I didn't leave stop filming there he was gonna call the police on me so you know so much for public land um, and that brings us to the topic of this video the number one issue facing wildlife populations all over the world is habitat loss even organizations that maybe you don't like like the World Wildlife Fund the Sierra Club and the Audubon Society and you know even a group like the Nature Conservatory Conservancy you know, they support legal, regulated hunting and consider it a conservation tool. The problem is that your average indoctrinated world citizen is too blind to see this. They conveniently think that hunters and global warming are the main issue here. You know, many will go as far as to blame hunters entirely and the really ignorant among them will lump hunters in with poachers. But the reality is that the biggest threat to all wildlife on this planet is in fact habitat loss. And the really tragic reality to this is that most people don't seem to notice or care. A few months ago, a social justice warrior commented on one of my videos about how evil killing an elephant is. And I explained to him that their populations are being pushed into smaller and smaller isolated areas. I explained to them that elephants are actually very environmentally destructive animals. Elephants are responsible for 54% of forest destruction in Kenya's national parks where hunting isn't allowed. And they're responsible for about 12% of forest destruction in Kruger National Park in South Africa where cull hunts are allowed. You know, even Botswana had to eliminate their ban on elephant hunting. You know, I tried to explain scientific concepts like carrying capacity, but they just don't listen. So why doesn't your average person know about habitat loss? And why don't they know that habitat loss is the real enemy of wildlife? Well, I'll tell you, it's because of political ideology, profit, and funding motives, and that has everything to do with it. Now, a lot of good little leftists around the world discount hunting as a conservation tool because hunters are counter to their ideological worldview. You know, therefore, hunting can't be good, can it? The media and decades of indoctrination are the main culprits here. Leftists also tend to oppose independence and self-reliance, which is the essence of the hunting culture. Marxist propaganda has basically turned the whole world against hunting. So concepts like habitat loss and conservation through hunting are just completely lost on them. It's their, it's their home. home, let, let them roam. They have a right to be a sick human being. If you know people who like to sh shoot uh, animals, uh, you know, uh, you need to ask yourself why uh, you are friends with that person, why you overlook that trait. 
I knew a guy who, uh, you know, would go on these hunting trips and uh, kill the wild boars and st stick its, the wild boar head on, on his wall. And uh, about 10 years later, he shot himself in the head. I, I, th I think that's uh, fair play. Uh, but look, we need... It is 2015, and we know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we do not need to kill animals. You're, You're killing innocent, cute little creatures that have done nothing to you. Hunting's wrong. I'm sorry, hunting is wrong. It's disgusting. It's it's pr completely primal. And the second reason that the world ignores habitat loss is a profit motive. Leaving habitat in its natural state doesn't really make a lot of money. Well, unless hunters pay to hunt on it. Too many people want to cry about oil pipelines through barren tundra and cattle grazing on BLM land, but the real habitat loss is happening right under our noses right now. At local levels, developers and resource interests pretty much own most city councils and county board of supervisors. I mean, look what's going on behind me. Cities keep acquiring land from counties and out come the dozers and the graders to make new track homes and shopping centers. You know, in their insatiable appetite for tax revenue, counties give corporations huge tracts of wild land to build new factories and develop resources too. And before you know it, the place you used to hunt deer or quail or doves is a shopping center now. And this is just this monster adobe facility right here. And basically, this whole area now is like the new Silicon Valley. Um, where this stands, there used to be huge herds of elk that would come down here. You'd see them all the time. And, uh, you know, a long time ago, they put up a uh, Cabela's right over there, and that was basically the only thing over here. And actually, I saw pictures of uh, herds of elk that would come down and hang out around that Cabela's. But now, uh, yeah, there's going to be no more elk or herds of deer down here. This is, uh, this is all developed now. You know, but it's green. And these are all little planned communities where they move all the transplanted Californians into. Basically, all these tech companies build all these huge condo and apartment complexes to uh, move employees here. So none of these people... Look at all this beautiful habitat out here. And then, bam! Brand new Best Buy, Panera, Ashley Home Furniture, condos. Wow. All of this stuff down in this valley all of it, these condos, these hotels, these housing tracks, none of this existed the last time I drove through here. So even ultra liberal cities like Los Angeles wanna keep habitat loss off the radar because it's essential to their profit motive. As long as we keep pounding the gospel of global warming, people ignore things like habitat loss. This is the sad reality of habitat loss that both political parties pretty much ignore. Now let's talk about public funding. The federal government last year gave $14 billion in funding for climate change research and technology. And the Biden administration is just about to add another $14 billion of funding on top of that. That's $28 billion in funding for climate change research, which is a virtual gold rush of funding for universities in the scientific community. So let's put this in perspective. Let's say that one university wants to do a study on how development, like you see behind me, affects habitat loss. And then another university, a completely different university, wants funding to study how climate change affects habitat loss. Well, in all likelihood, research that has a climate change angle to it 
is going to get preferential treatment for grants and research that meets the political ideology of the people giving the grants is going to get the lion's share of the funding. So now the main cause of habitat loss is being ignored by the scientific community and their quest to keep the funding gravy train rolling. And all of these impressionable young future scientists in these universities are going to continue to ignore real science and the quest for more funding, just like the, their professors before them did. So now let's look at the nonprofits of the of uh, in this conversation, like for instance, the World Wildlife Fund. Although they know that hunting is a great conservation tool and that development is the leading cause of habitat loss, they also want huge amounts of uh, public and private funding. So in the interest of funding, they can't just go out and publicly declare the truth. They need to bury the truth deep in the depths of their website and openly fight climate change. The real tragedy of this climate change gold rush is that real issues like trash and toxic chemicals in our oceans and habitat loss due to due to uh, development, like what you see behind me, are being completely ignored. As a result, habitat loss is just running unchecked right now under our very noses because the scientific community cares more about funding than it does about solving problems. Now let's talk about solutions for habitat loss. From a global perspective, it's very difficult, especially for developing countries, because you're essentially asking developing countries to stop developing. So I hate to sound like Bill Gates, Margaret Sanger, or your run-of-the-mill communist, but the only true solution to habitat loss is to stop population growth. This sounds evil, and brings up images of mass sterilizations, forced euthanasia, and brings up images of, uh, of some other eugenics fantasy to rid the world of undesirable classes of people. So I won't go there. And I'll emphatically state that I'm against all human rights abuses. Instead, I'll concentrate on stopping habitat loss in the United States which is a situation we have more control over. So let's talk about population control in the USA to stop habitat loss. For the uh, progressive Americans among us, population control might mean throwing the constitution in the trash can and mandating Chinese style child limits. You know, if that doesn't work because the Supreme Court finally decides to come out of hiding and do their jobs, Congress might try to do something like offer government incentives for people not to have more than a certain number of children. But honestly, in the end, neither approach would work for these leftists because they'll decrease the amount of childbirths by, you know, maybe 2 million, but they'll likely let 5 million more illegal immigrants across the southern border each year. So we'll still keep losing habitat to feed and house more people. And then the right-wing conservative-minded folks among us might say, stop paying people to not work. They'll tell you that picking oranges and cleaning hotel rooms are jobs American citizens who are sitting on their couch collecting government subsidies should be doing. They'll claim that putting people to work will eliminate the need for almost 4 million legal and illegal immigrants entering the U.S. each year. But, you know, honestly... Currently, new immigrants are outnumbering childbirths in the U.S. You know, so um, although allowing enough immigration per year to maintain a fixed population number would control population growth, it sounds like a great solution, right? It does sound great until you realize that a big portion of conservative voters out there are also sitting on their couches collecting government subsidies right now. And they'll vote against whoever tries to cut them off and force them to mow lawns and pick grapes. So 
you know what a twisted web we find ourselves in right now also another important thing you need to consider here is that stopping population growth means that GDP will probably stall real estate might collapse and government pyramid schemes like Social Security and pension plans will probably fail so knowing now that population control will never happen how else can we slow down habitat loss well we can probably be more responsible with what land we develop whether it's a tiny bug or a weed or a deer all development creates some type of habitat loss you know but we could be more mindful of preserving pristine habitats this mean that this means most likely that development companies need to stop controlling city councils and county boards of supervisors. This means that we need to stop letting lobbyists control our public land. This also means that we need to stop building houses, ranchettes, condos, and tract homes in pristine wildlife habitats. So in conclusion, I have to say it really sucks getting old when you've been an outdoorsman your entire life. You tend to reflect on all the great places you used to hunt and fish that are now gone due to development. You've watched animal populations get pushed onto private land or little pockets of public land where animals used to roam as far as the eye could see. You know, you've seen the most beautiful places get completely paved over you've seen your trout fishing spots turned into riverfront riverfront homes you know and starbucks seem like they're being built everywhere where you used to stock deer and you have to wonder when is it going to end and this problem isn't just isolated to overpopulated states like california new york and florida the low population mountain west and desert states are experiencing population increases that are more than double the national average. Arizona, Idaho, and Utah have basically doubled their population in the last 30 years. Nevada has almost tripled its population in that time. Much of the land needed to support this sudden influx of people was formerly public land that outdoorsmen like me and you used to enjoy and now it's gone forever. In California, we used to have salmon runs in every month of the year from San Diego all the way up to the Oregon border. And this supported a huge amount of animals, you know, including the now extinct California grizzly or California golden bear, which was the largest and meanest of all the brown bears, by the way. This because we dammed up, diverted, paved and polluted these rivers to the point where the salmon and the bears disappeared. The southern central valley was once a huge wetland teeming with tule oak and one of the largest waterfowl concentrations on earth, but we drained it, plowed it, and we now use it to grow food for a population of over 40 million people in this state. And I'd hate to see the same thing happen to Montana, Idaho, Arizona, and Utah. So please don't make the same mistakes that California did. Watch your state and local governments and join organizations that are hunter friendly that fight against habitat loss. Well, I wanna thank you for enjoying my commentary on habitat loss. I obviously don't have all the answers or any of the answers, but I think I laid out a pretty good argument and gave my viewers something to think about. You can contact me with any questions or comments at desertdogoutdoors at gmail.com. And as always, thanks for watching and good hunting.